After all of this time, I think it's safe to say that Can't Be Your Own World has aged very well. Despite some criticisms that fans may have of Ryogo Narita, there is no denying that the man clearly understands Bleach. This is evident as you read Can't Be Your Own World because Narita has such an incredible understanding of Bleach's world and its characters. One aspect of these light novels which really impresses me is Hisagi's final battle against Hikone. And honestly, it was a final battle that had felt very reminiscent of what you would find within Kubo's original manga. Hisagi's final battle here serves as a culmination of his character arc. And how could I forget, this fight also includes an absolutely jaw-dropping Bankai reveal. So before I give everything away in the introduction of this video, let's dive into my complete breakdown and analysis of Hisagi vs Ikone. Be sure to stick around until the very end of this video as I'll be giving my insights into the incredible Bankai of Shuhei Hisagi. <laughs> Discover the Undead Collection and be amongst the very first to join us on our journey over at Getsuga.com. To have Hisagi as the protagonist of Can't Fear Your Own World, it was honestly a gift that kept on giving. I really enjoyed following his character over the course of the story and then having it all end with his final battle against Hikone, it was truly incredible. After Tokinada is shockingly defeated at the hands of the Gotei 13, he is then forced to retreat from the battlefield. He leaves behind Hikone who was locked in an intense battle against Kimpachi Zaraki, but things weren't looking too good for Hikone who was battling evenly against Kimpachi who had still yet to even use is Bankai. The stakes at this point in the story couldn't be any lower. The world was no longer in danger from Tokinada's uncontrollable evil, and honestly speaking, Hikone really stood no chance of defeating Kimpachi. Even if Hikone was somehow able to defeat Kimpachi, then they would still have to face off against the remainder of the Gotei 13, which is definitely too much for Hikone to handle. So if Hikone was battling against Kimpachi, how on earth did Shuhei Hisagi end up getting involved? Hikone's battle against Kimpachi had started started around the same time that Tokinada had began his fight against the Gotei 13. Hikone's battle was extremely intense and during the process Hikone had even gone ahead and released their resurrection, forcing Kimpachi to not only take off his eye patch but to also contemplate on activating his Shikai. This meant that Kimpachi considered Hikone to be an opponent who was worthy of being taken seriously. So it's safe to say Kimpachi was definitely enjoying this battle. Now over the course of Can't Fear Own World, Shuhei Hisagi had started to take a liking to Hikone. He somewhat pitied the child for falling victim to Tokinada's manipulation. In Hisagi's eyes, Hikone was just a child who appeared to have no will of their own and was functioning as Tokinada's puppet. Hisagi in fact wanted to save Hikone's life and he didn't want to see a child who had no idea about what they were fighting for to end up dying for nothing. You could even conclude that maybe Hisagi had seen a bit of himself within Hikone. He was reminded of how he was like when Tozen was still teaching him what it means to be a Shinigami. With Hikone currently battling against Kimpachi, it seems as though their fate is sealed. But that is until Hisagi pretty much steps up to Kimpachi and tells him to go away. Ikaku and Yumichika who were watching what was going on had just realized that Hisagi has asked for nothing short of a death sentence. Hisagi tells Kimpachi that Hikone was too weak for someone of Kimpachi's caliber to fight against. He even goes as far as to say that Hikone was weak than everyone who is presently on the battlefield. And if Kimpachi, who appears to be the strongest, was seen to be fighting against someone like Hikone, then it would just be a bad look for him. And what's even wilder than the things that Hisagi is saying is that Kimpachi actually ended up listening to him. It's implied within the story that the reason that he had agreed was because Yachiru had told him that Hisagi was right. But despite Yachiru's apparent involvement, this is a feat that quite literally no other character in the story has successfully been able to pull off. Off. So with Kimpachi stepping down, which literally shocked everyone who was watching, Hisagi takes his place and begins to fight the incredibly powerful Hikone. It's at this point in the story that we find out a crucial detail from Kensei, who was worried about his lieutenant going up against such a monster. Now, despite training to attain Bankai in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, Hisagi did not in fact attain his Bankai here. This revelation was very shocking because it was almost contradictory to what was implied within the manga. Because when 
Kensei had come to save Hisagi from Mask within the manga, he implied that Hisagi was beaten before he was able to show the fruits of his training. We learned that this statement had meant that Hisagi had gotten much stronger due to his training with Kensei and he was defeated before he could use that new strength, thus clarifying that Kensei was not hinting at Hisagi having actually attained Bankai. I'm not going to lie, this does feel like a bit of a retcon, but it ultimately serves to enhance the story of Can't Fear Your Own World, so I can easily overlook this. So Kensei notices that something is odd about Hisagi. Despite going through and enduring all kinds of punishment, even including having his chain of fate blown out by Lil Barrow, it seems as though Hisagi just isn't able to die. The guy continuously survives things that he really has no business living through, which makes Kensei wonder if this insane amount of endurance he possesses was somehow linked to his Zanbakdo's Bankai abilities. The story now cuts back to Hisagi and Hikone as the two face off against each other. Hisagi makes it very clear that he has no intention of killing Hikone and he only wants to stop them instead. Their statement was nothing but the truth as Hisagi just wants to save Hikone's life. And he wants to teach Hikone to embrace their own humanity and to help them learn the lesson that Tozen had taught to Hisagi. Despite these pure intentions, Hisagi just pretty much gets cut in half. He falls to the floor in two pieces and seemingly appears to have just died. Luckily, Hisagi's fate doesn't remain ambiguous for too long as the story cuts from their battle and moves to Hisagi's inner world. Hisagi Zanbakuto Kazeshini mercilessly laughs at him for getting himself cut in half, but it then proceeds to praise Hisagi for his conviction. It is here that he has his own The Blade Is Me moment, where he finally understands that his original rejection and his disdain for his Zanbakuto Kazeshini was in fact a direct result of his own inability to accept himself. So when Hisagi finally understands what it means to wield his blade, it then allows him to also understand Kazeshini, who we originally had assumed was just a bloodthirsty murderer. Kazeshini, his Zanbakuto spirit, quite literally represents Hisagi himself. Kazeshini was not a bloodthirsty Zanbakuto spirit, but instead, like Hisagi, it's a Zanbakuto spirit that wants to preserve life instead of taking it. The only life that Kazeshini needed, if we could even say that, was Hisagi's. It wanted him to stake his very being on his blade and to fight together with it. So after finally accepting Kazeshini, Hisagi gains the true power of his Zanbakuto. Cutting back to the outside world, Hikone had just turned around and set their sights on the remaining souls within the area, with every intention to carry out his master's final orders. Due to how quickly Hisagi was killed by Hikone, the Shinigami were a bit stunned. Kensei in particular was definitely saddened by the fact that his lieutenant had just gotten himself killed. But Kimpachi and Shunsui, who are far more experienced than the other characters around, immediately knew that Hisagi wasn't dead yet, and so they had told their colleagues not to worry. So before Hikone could take even another step towards the other Shinigami, Hisagi had already gotten back up like nothing had happened to him. Hisagi's recovery absolutely shocks everybody. Hikone begins to panic as they then proceed to kill Hisagi again. From dismemberment to decapitation to blowing away his heart, as well as Hisagi's chain of fate with a Sero, but nothing that Hikone could do appeared to be enough to put Hisagi down. Hisagi still felt the pain of every brutal attack that was being inflicted on him, but miraculously, all of the wounds that he would sustain would suddenly disappear right after the attack makes contact with him. Nobody on the battlefield is able to explain what is happening with him, and as Hikone begins to panic due to their inability to comprehend what Hisagi is doing, the Shinigami then begins to remember what Ora Michibane had told him before he had arrived on the scene. She had told him that she believed that Hisagi was the one who could save Hikone's future, and she had implored him to save the child. He uses her words to strengthen his conviction, and he promises to save Hikone. Not too long after this, he activates his Bankai. Following his Bankai activation, we can confirm that the true ability of Hisagi's Shikai is to guarantee his life by healing him no matter what injury he sustains. So after activating his Bankai, Hikone is now ensnared in its power, being the ultimate stalemate mechanic. Neither Hikone nor Hisagi can harm each other now that the Bankai has been activated. Hikone pushes forward and continues to rain a myriad of attacks on Hisagi, but they prove to be completely futile as Hisagi heals even quicker than he did when he was just using his Shikai. Now the same also actually applies to Hikone, who is being healed by Hisagi's power also. Hikone begins to panic even more as none of their attacks are effective against Hisagi, nor are they helping Hikone to be 
free from Hisagi's Bankai. Hikone's mind begins to race through all of the knowledge of Bankai that he had received from Tokinada, but none of it was useful against Hisagi's Bankai. The Shinigami then explains to Hikone that due to his cowardice, he was afraid of dying, but at the same time, he was also afraid to kill another. Hisagi's Bankai is an embodiment of how he feels. This is why the immortality that protected him also extends to Hikone. Hisagi explains to Hikone that his Bankai draws upon the energy of the two of them in order to grant them immortality. But if the two of them exhaust their energy reserves, then they will end up dying. Hikone's desperation begins to overwhelm them as they then begin to mercilessly brutalize Hisagi's body. Hikone kills him over and over again, despite knowing that he is immortal. But as Hikone continued to kill Hisagi, for some reason, with each fatal blow that they land, they would also add a small apology to Hisagi due to the pain that they knew that they were causing him. Despite being functionally immortal, Hisagi had literally no means of actually fighting Hikone. He was still massively outclassed on every front, so the only thing that he could do was to endure the one-sided assault as he had tried to speak to Hikone. He asked Hikone why they were constantly apologizing if they were simply carrying out Tokinada's orders. We learned that Hikone hates the fact that he is brutalizing an enemy who is unable to defend themselves. Hikone at this point was conflicted. Between constantly hurting someone who wouldn't fight back or going against Tokinada's orders, which were the highest form of law to them at the time. This led to Hikone stopping his barrage of attacks, as his juvenile mind just wasn't able to process the moral quandary that they had found themselves in. With Hikone now in a mentally weakened state, Hisagi finally decides to fight back as a means of helping them. But he didn't just mindlessly attack Hikone, he instead fought them as though he was a teacher sparring with a student, taking the time to correct their form and to teach them how to wield a blade just like his own master Tozen had taught him a long time ago. Hisagi even mocks Hikone's poor form during some of their attacks and tells them that their sword is lacking in fear. This is honestly just a really sad reminder of the fact that Tozen was a gentle and loving teacher who would have continued to teach like he had used to if not for Tokinada's evil actions. But on the positive side, this means that Hisagi has truly inherited Tozen's philosophy and that it will always continue to live on through him. As Hisagi continues to school Hikone, they release a final scream of desperation and unleash their final barrage of attacks on Hisagi. But as Hikone attempts to launch their attack, but Hisagi points out multiple openings that Hikone is failing to guard, as he then advises Hikone to not fight carelessly. This proves to be the last straw as it completely crushes Hikone's will to fight, thus resulting in them finally giving up and thus bringing Hikone and Hisagi's fight to an end. The beauty of this fight was once again not in the explosiveness or the tactics that were displayed, but rather the fact that Hisagi had finally grown into an ideal Shinigami. And the way that Tozen's character is interlinked into all of this just makes me really emotional, and I really cannot praise Can't Feel Your Own World enough for creating such an incredible story that lives outside of the realms of the manga. It's amazing how so many of Tozen's teachings now live on through Hisagi, and I think that it was an amazing choice on Kubo and Narita's part for having Hisagi as the protagonist of these light novels. He was finally able to reconcile his differences with his Zanpakuto and to finally activate his Bankai, and it's an incredible culmination of his character arc, which results in him then ultimately saving Hikone, and Hisagi finally has somewhat of a disciple that he can pass Tozen's teachings onto. Honestly, if the anime staff were to ever animate the Can't Feel Your Own World light novels, this is definitely a section of the story that I would love to see animated. Let me know all of your thoughts about the Can't Feel Your Own World light novels and the character of Hisagi. What do you think about Shuhei Hisagi's battle against Hikone? Did you guys know about this fight in the first place? And did you know that Hisagi was able to talk down Kimpachi from a fight? Also, I have a standalone video on the channel where I talk about Hisagi's Bankai in detail, so definitely go and check out that video. If there's anything that I've forgotten to mention, then definitely let me know. I'm really thankful that you've all made it to the end of this video, and I cannot wait to see you in my next Bleach Explained video. A massive thank you goes out to all of my amazing Patreon supporters for helping to make this video possible. If you also want to support the channel and see your name in the end of my videos, then check out my Patreon, which has loads of perks like early video access and so much more. Thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.